All right, so we are going to spend two days on this. Um, I'm going to teach it today, and then next class, come in here prepared to just practice problems, okay? Because people do find it difficult, so we're going to spend two days on it. So related rates. What I think is extra cool about this is we're going to work these out like by hand. But what's really neat is your brain actually does this without you even being aware of it. For example, if you're um, in the grocery store and you're pushing your trolley along and someone else is pushing theirs, your rates are related to each other because you're both moving. Everything's moving in these problems. Okay, calculus is, is rates of change, study of rates of change. You will automatically adjust your speed based on how the other person is moving so that you don't collide. Like you don't stop what you're doing and do a calculus problem to figure out how to not hit each other. Your brain just does it, which is cool. We're like built to do calculus, all right? Uh, but that's what's going on is everything's moving and it's how the rates relate to each other. So you're going to draw a picture if it's necessary. Usually it will be. Um, make a list of what you're given and then the missing value, which I call the question mark value. Then you have to come up with an equation that relates the variables to each other. Oftentimes, it'll be one of those things on the little strip of paper I gave you. The problem's about the volume of a cone. You need the volume of a cone, et cetera. Sometimes it's Pythagorean theorem, which is always nice, okay? But you have to have some sort of relationship between the variables. Take the derivative. Now, this is probably the most important step because that's the calculus, is taking the derivative. And here's what's crucial. Every single variable is with respect to time. So you know the thing we just reviewed, dy, dx? Now it's dt for every single variable. You will have dy dt, dx dt, dv dt, dq dt, dm dt. I don't care what letter of the alphabet it is, it's gonna be dt. They all get a dt. Everything is with respect to time, okay? That's the crucial thing. And then you plug in chug. Once you get through that, you plug in what you've got, solve for what you're missing, put units at the end. Real quick, if something is just a distance, for example, that would be feet. If it is an area, that would be feet squared and a volume is feet cubed that can be like a huge clue as to what's going on in the problem all right so i'm going to share my screen so that it shows up on the video because i have videos for these problems because you'll notice nothing is written on here <laughs> um because this is cool and you can actually see what's going on oh can i move this i want this to be out of the way Okay, so this first one is a very famous calculus problem. It is the ladder problem. So I'm going to slide the ladder. So watch what happens. The ladder slides down the wall. And it's going to fall. And then just like in real life, it's going to get back up again. Okay, so a ladder is leaning against the wall. It is a six meter ladder. The bottom of it is being pulled out. That's the X variable. Constant rate of a half a meter per second. How fast, that would be our question mark is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall when it reaches, and they give you a whole bunch, this would be like part A, part C, we're just gonna do the first one, so five meters. Everything is in motion, so you have to hit pause at the one particular moment that you're talking about, because everything's moving. So they have to say at five meters or whatever it is. So do you notice what kind of a shape is going on here? A triangle, so a triangle and specifically a right triangle. So that's what we're gonna put on our paper, all right? So we're going to have our right triangle. Now you can only label a number something that is constant. Anything that is constant. Otherwise, it has to be a variable. So this side is changing. This side is changing. But it is not an incredible growing ladder. The ladder is not growing or shrinking. The la I know I always get somebody who's like, well, ladders can extend. Yeah, but it's not, okay? The ladder is a constant amount, all right? So what was the ladder? All right, so you can label six meters on your picture. You can only put a number, though, if it's constant. Otherwise, it needs to be a variable because it's changing, okay? So let's list out what else we've got. I'm going to have to keep going back and forth here to put it on the video. All right, so what are we being told about X? The bottom is being pulled out at half a meter per second. Is that X distance growing or shrinking as it's growing? So it would be a positive rate, okay? So DX DT is a positive half a meter per second. If it was shrinking, it would be negative. But like, do you get what I'm saying? Sometimes people will put arrows on their pictures. Like this part of the ladder's coming out, that's growing. But what would be happening to this distance? It's shrinking. 
And what we're looking for is dy dt. That was our question mark value. It was how top, how fast is the top of the ladder sliding down? Now this is a personal preference, but I always encourage everybody to do this. We're expecting that answer to be negative. So just write negative. The reason why is when you go to do the multiple choice on the test, hint, hint, wink, wink. If there's four choices and two of them have a positive and two of them have a negative, you're down to a 50-50 chance like already. Do you get what I'm saying? Or it'll say the amount is increasing or the amount is decreasing. Now we have to pause at a certain moment. So let me go back. We're gonna pause when, how fast is the ladder top sliding when it, meaning the top of the ladder is five meters. So is that when X is five or when Y is five? Y, y is five meters. Cause again, everything's moving. So you have to pause at that particular moment. So when Y is five meters. So we got everything from the problem. If you're paying attention to your steps up here, we drew a picture, we made our list of everything they gave us. Now we need to write an equation. You need a relationship between these variables. Since it's a right triangle, what can we do? Perfect, it is x squared plus y squared equals six squared. Or you could put 36, it really doesn't matter because that's a constant. So it's about to go away anyway. Now we're gonna do the derivative and remember number four that we circled up here. So what's your derivative of x squared? Perfect, 2x dx dt. Every single variable gets a chain rule because they are all with respect to time. You're gonna end up with those all over the place. Every single variable gets one. All right, plus, and then what's your derivative of 2y? Or oh, I, t I said it. <laughs> all right, so it's 2y, sorry, dy dt, good, equals, and then that's a constant, so that will be zero. Now, here's my suggestion, and this happens all the time with Pythagorean theorem. If you were to divide this by two and divide this by two and then divide zero by two, zero divided by anything, still zero. So you can actually just cross out those twos. They're going to go away. If you leave them in there, you'll just have bigger numbers, okay? And now we plug and chug. You plug in uh, for what you've got, find out what you're missing. So X, do we have X? That happens sometimes. We're gonna have to go back and find X. Actually, that happens pretty often where you're missing something and you have to stop what you're doing and go back and get it. All right, DX DT, <clears throat> do I have that? DX DT, one half, good. Plus, what's Y? Do I have Y? Y is five. Now DY DT is your question mark, so you just kind of leave that there. Now we have to stop what we're doing and go back and find something when that happens. You go back to the original equation and plug in what you have, all right? We're looking for X. What is Y at the moment that we're talking about? Five. So off to the side, this is like a margin problem. We're going to do X squared plus five squared equals six squared, just off to the side. You have to stop what you're doing and go find it. It's annoying. I get it. So that would be x squared plus 25 equals 36. So welcome back to geometry class. That would be x squared equals 11. So x is square root of 11. So we've got everything plugged in. Now we just need to get dy dt by itself. So how would you start getting that by itself? You just need to get that alone. Subtract over that. So that would be five dy dt equals negative, I'm gonna write it as square root of 11 over two. You can write one half square root of 11. It, like that's getting down to personal preference. And then what would be your last step? Yeah. Now divide by five. If you divide by two and then you divide by five, you have really divided by 10. So it is square root of 11 over 10 units. We found dy dt, so it is a rate of change. It needs to have a per in there, something per something else, meters per second. So I will go back and show it to you, our ladder here, because I think I can make it go to, yep. When y is five, it would be right there. And then show dy dt, oh, see, they did a decimal. If you were to plug in negative square root of 11 over 10, it would give you that. You know, trust me. Okay, let's go to the next one. This one's about a boat being reeled in. Isn't that cool? 
I love this. Isn't that neat? You can see it moving. All right. So a winch, that's like the reel it in thingy. Um, at an altitude of 20 feet, so it's 20 feet above the water, is that changing? No, no. no it is not the incredible growing dock. It isn't growing or shrinking. That is 20 feet above the water. That's not going to change. That's constant. Is reeling in the rope, so the rope is changing. They used R for rope. <clears throat> Notice how it's R of T, respect to time. And then that horizontal distance, they've got that called X, so X of T, respect to time. How fast is the boat moving when the rope is? And again, we're just going to do the first one, so 45 feet out. All right. Let's go to our paper. What shape are we going to draw? Another right triangle. Good. Now, the 20 feet was constant. So you can put that as a number because that's not changing. They called this R for rope and this X. Usually anything horizontal, I'll make X. And anything vertical, I'll make Y. Just be consistent with X and Y. All right. Now, let's see what else we have. I want you guys to try and pull the information out of here for me. We got the 20 in there. We're reeling in the rope at two feet per second. It's not R, but why is it BRDT? Because it's the rate. It's something per something else. Okay. And what is happening to the rope legs? Shrink. So it's actually not two. It's Negative two. negative two. Good. All right. So we've got dr dt is negative two feet per second. All right. Let's see what else we've got. What's our what's our question mark? Is how fast? That's the that's going to be the question mark thing. How fast is the boat moving? Yeah. We're looking for dx dt. And we are expecting it to be what? What's happening to the boat? It's getting pulled in. So that distance is shrinking. We're expecting a negative answer. Yes, but remember it's directional. The distance is shrinking. Think velocity. Okay, the distance is shrinking. Don't overthink it. If the amount is getting smaller, you have a negative rate. All right, and now we need to pause at a certain moment because if everything's moving, you need to like pause it at a certain moment. So we're gonna pause when it's the rope. So R equals, or we're just gonna do the first one. So R equals 45. So we're gonna pause at that moment. R is 45 feet. All right, that's everything from the problem. Now I need a relationship between the variables. Again, it's gonna be, yes, yeah, your Pythagorean theorem. So 20 squared is a constant, that's 400, but it doesn't really matter, it's gonna go away. This would be dx dt, good, equals, yeah, same thing with r, and then you can leave the twos in if you want, but I feel like it's better to just cancel them because then you have less numbers to worry about. And then you're gonna plug in. Heads up, we will be missing something, usually you are. All right, so do we have x? No, womp womp. All right, do we have dx dt? Uh, no, but that's what we're looking for, so that's fine. Leave that in there. Equals r. What is r at this particular moment? 45. And then dr dt is negative 2. So when you are missing something, this is going to be like a margin problem. you got to stop what we're doing, go back and find it. You go back to the original equation and plug in what you know. Um, so we said R is 45. So off to the side here, I've got 20 squared plus X squared equals 45 squared. I know 20 squared is 400. I'm going to need a calculator for 45 squared. Believe it or not, I don't know that one off the top of my head. 2,025. And then you would minus over the 400. I just typed that in as well, just for the sake of I've got a calculator here. Um, it is 1,625. Now this really kind of frustrates me because your next step would be to square root. 1,625 is not a perfect square. That almost feels criminal. Do you know what I mean? Like 16 and 25. Yeah, but it's not, um, which fine. This would just be square root of 1,625. 
I feel like that's not allowed though. I feel like that's, <laughs> it's not a perfect square. All right, and then your last step, just get dx dt by itself. So this would be negative 90 and then over that awful square root and then units feet per second. Good. It has to be something per something else. And I'll go back to the little animation and show it to you. So we want the rope to be 45 feet out or pushed it back out that time um, and show dx dt. So it should be negative. Um, so if you were to type negative 90 divided by the square root of 1625 in the calculator, this is what you would get. All right, so go ahead and flip over and I'll show you the third one. I love these little animations, they're so cool. All right, so this is about a cone that is filling up with water. So watch. It fills up really quick at the start. Do you see how that's like really fast? And then it kind of slows down. Why is that? It's smaller. It's smaller. See, like you do it intuitively. Like your brain just understands and makes sense. You don't have to stop what you're doing and like do a calculus problem. Like your brain just gets it, okay? Now it is not the incredible growing cone. The cone is staying the same size. The cone-shaped water is what's changing. Do you get what I'm saying? The cone is staying the same size the amount of water in the cone, which is cone shaped, because water is you know, gonna take up the amount of space it has, that is what is changed. So we're gonna draw a cone on our paper. All right, so we're gonna just draw this so that we can have a picture. And again, the cone is not changing, it's the amount of water in it that is changing. So let me go back and get the dimensions for the cone. Um, what did it say? Look at the little yellow box at the bottom. What is the radius and height of the actual cone? Height is 16, radius is four, and we're in centimeters, okay? So the height of the cone is 16, and I can label that with a number because it's not changing, and it said the radius is four centimeters, okay? Now I'm gonna make this blue for the water, You're not really gonna be able to tell, but the water in the cone is changing. So that gets variables and they used H for heights and R for radius. Hey, Miss Cole, I hate that. And I wanna use X and Y. Be my guest. Like typically it's better to pick letters that match what's going on, um, but it is essentially up to you. So let me share again and we'll get some more information from the problem. All right, so we got all that. Now it says water is flowing into the cone at this rate. What do you notice about the units? Because the units are a big clue. It's cubed. So that means it's a rate of change for what? Volume. So, and is it positive or negative? It's filling up, so positive. Okay, so how do I label that on my paper if it's the rate of change for volume? It's volume. Good, there we go. DV dt is two centimeters cubed per, what was it, minute? I think it was minute. I'll look back at it. But see how the units can help you figure it out? If it's cubed, it has to be volume, and it was a rate of change, so DV dt. It's going to be whatever it is dt. Those are going to be all the rates of change. Okay? All right, so looking back, how fast? That would be your question mark value. How fast is the water level rising? So what's our question mark? Good, dh dt is question mark. Are we expecting it to be positive or negative? Good, why positive? Increasing amount, perfect. Positive increasing. All right, when, you have to pause at a certain moment, when it is five centimeters deep, again, we'll just do the first one. So it's at the moment that the height is five centimeters. So that's everything that we got from the problem. Now we're talking about volume of a cone. Do you have that little strip of paper that I gave you? Your relationship between the variables is going to be the volume formula for a cone. Do you see it on there? One third pi r squared h. Here is the thing. And we're about to do a whole big lot of algebra. We don't have any information about r. We need to substitute R out. We need R to go away because I don't have any information about R. 
So do you see the big triangle and then the little triangle inside of it? I call them the mommy triangle and the baby triangle. But do you remember in geometry similar triangles? No? Okay. We're going to set up a ratio. 16 matches up with H. So off to the side here, we're going to have 16 over H equals, good, 4 over R. Perfect. And then you can cross multiply. So that would give you 16 R equals 4 H. And I want R by itself because I want to substitute out R. I want R to go away. So if you divide both sides by 16, that's going to give you 1 fourth H. Again, I have not done any calculus yet. All algebra. We're going to take that 1 fourth H and plug it in for R. To make R go bye-bye. You want R to go away. You don't have any information about R, so you need for it to go away. So you get volume equals 1 third pi. In place of R, you're going to put... 1 fourth h squared, and then another h. So you have a couple of steps of simplifying to do. Um, that's This is actually not even algebra. It's really just simplifying. We're going to square what's in the parentheses. So 1 fourth squared, 1 sixteenth, good. And then h squared is just h squared. Like we just squared the stuff in the parentheses, but you have to do this to get it simplified down first. And then when we um, multiply the one third times the one sixteenth, that would be one forty eighth pi h cubed. I'm just going to pause a second and let it sink in. We set up this ratio, we plugged in for r, and we simplified it down. We haven't done any calculus yet. Now we're gonna do some calculus though. We're gonna take a derivative. So it will be dv dt equals, and you would need to do a power rule. You're gonna bring the three down. Now you can write three forty-eighths, but that would reduce to one sixteenth. But if you're like, no, I wanna write three forty-eighths, you do you, same thing, it doesn't matter. Pi h squared, times dh dt, good. If you're like, oh, I'm scared I'm gonna forget that dh dt, you will catch it because it's what you're looking for. If you listed this out, you're gonna notice it's missing because you're gonna be like, hey, where's the thing I'm looking for? Okay, now we're gonna plug in. Do we have dv dt? Yes, that's two equals 1 16th pi, uh, do we have h? Oh my gosh, we had everything this time. We didn't have to like stop and do another problem to figure out what we were missing. I'm actually done cleaning this up. This is such a mess that I'm just over it. To get the HDT, you're gonna divide all this stuff to the other side. So it's gonna be two over all of that. And then we just need to figure out what the units are. What do you think for the units? It is centimeters, not cubed, because it's not a volume. What did we find the rate of? Height, height's just a distance. That's not three-dimensional. Um, but it does need to be per minute. Listen to the questions, guys, so I can answer them. Like when you replaced um, R squared with one fourth H squared, was it really just like plug in that one? No, that's a good question, and that happens a lot. I get asked that a lot. He asked, when you put this here, can you just go ahead and plug into H? No, you have to take a derivative before plugging in. Remember, you have to do some calculus before you plug in numbers. So the derivative has to happen first. Okay? Yes. For, um, Listen to the questions because it will benefit all of you. <clears throat> so, okay, another good question. I put the three over the 48 and then reduced it. Three 48s would be 1 16th. But I do get a lot of people that prefer writing it this way, and it's completely correct. 
148th pi times 3h squared dh dt. Yeah, I just went ahead. I got kind of fancy. I put it all together, but this means the exact same thing. And if you like that better, do that because I don't want you to be confused. You have to do it the way it works for you. That's such a good question. Okay, I have time to do at least one more. All right, so we'll go to number four. I think this is the shadow one. I like this one too. Oh yeah, look, it's a guy uh, walking away from a street lamp. All right, so a man who is how tall? Is he the incredible growing man? No, he is staying six feet. Someone's always like, we're all shrinking. I'm like, whatever. He's six feet tall. He's walking away from a lamppost that is 15 feet tall. Is it the incredible growing lamppost? We are not in Narnia. It is 15 feet tall. That is not going to change. All right, so let's go ahead and put that on our paper. So we actually have two right triangles. So the man is six feet and the lamppost is 15 feet. You can put numbers because they're constant. They're not changing. Anything that is changing needs to be a variable. All right, so that's what we've got so far. All right, um, uh, I guess, the, oh, no, they tell us a five feet per second. What's our five feet per second? That's how fast he's walking away from the lamppost. So the distance between the guy and the lamppost, we have to call that something. I would call it X. And then that rate he's walking, that five feet per second, how would we label that? Yeah, that's DX, D, I think it was five, right? Yeah, DX, DT, oh, positive or negative five? Why is it positive? Increasing, growing, all right? So five feet per second is how fast he's walking. I need a question mark value, so I'm gonna go back and see what they were asking us for. Um, and this is a part A and a part B. We're gonna do two parts of this. First part, how fast is his shadow lengthening? So we need to call that something. Oh, he went back, come over here. So his shadow is this distance. I would call it Y. Uh, I mean, it's up to you. Um, but what is the question mark value? Yep, DY, DT. And are we expecting it to be positive or negative? Awesome. And they even said lengthening in the problem. How fast is the shadow lengthening? So that was a big clue there. All right. We cannot do Pythagorean theorem. Why not? Yeah, we don't have the hypotenuse and there's two triangles. So we're going to do the same thing that we did over here and set up that ratio, the similar triangles. So 15 is going to match up with six. Good. Now this is a little bit tricky. It's the whole way across, which would be X plus, good, okay. I guess that wasn't tricky for you guys. You got that. X plus Y, that's, you know, I call it the mommy triangle and the baby triangle. It's the big one. And then just the little one would just be Y. Okay, cool. We're going to cross multiply. So that's going to give you 15Y equals, now here you'd have to distribute the six. So 6X six plus 6Y. Six now you could go ahead and do the derivative right there if you wanted to, but I would make the argument, you should do one more step to get like terms together just to make it a little bit easier. If you subtract over the six Y, you'll get nine Y equals six X. And then it's just about the easiest derivative I could give you. What's the derivative of nine Y? DY DT, good, equals, and then this would be six DX DT. And then you just plug in. So 9 dy dt equals 6 times 5. That would be 30 divided by 9. That would be 10 thirds. And then what are your units? Feet per second. And we got a positive answer like we were expecting. So let's go back and do the part B. So the part B, how fast is the shadow's tip moving? Do you see this red like clown nose dot that they stuck on the end there? Okay, do you see how that's all the way from the lamppost out to the edge? Hurry and look, I think he went back. Just like in real life, he started, he went the whole way around the earth, I guess. Um, so do you see how it's that whole distance? Like from the lamppost all the way out to that red dot. I realized that we have that called X plus Y. 
There's no such thing as an X plus Y DT, okay? You have to call that a new variable. So I'm gonna call it Z. Whatever letter of the alphabet you want, I usually pick X, Y, and Z. A v for volume and H for height and like R for radius all makes sense. But if you don't have things like that, just you know, pick X, Y, and Z. So for part B, DZ, DT is our question mark and we're still expecting it to be positive. It's gonna be the same ratio, like the mommy triangle and the baby triangle. Um, 15 matches up with six. So the big one compared to the small one. But then how would you do this side? Instead of calling it X plus Y, we would just go ahead and call it Z over Y. Because for the tip of the shadow, it's all the way to the edge. So you need that whole distance. And I realize it's X plus Y, but there's no such thing as a DX plus Y DT. Like you have to call it a new variable. Um, you can't, you're not allowed to like DX plus Y something. That's not a thing. All right, so we're gonna cross multiply. That would be 15 Y equals six Z. And then that's about the easiest derivative you could ask for. It'll be 15 dy dt equals six dz dt. And we had to do part A first because we need that answer to do part B. What is dy dt that we're plugging in? Good, that's oh, perfect. You guys are paying attention. Did you guys notice in this one, we never had to pause at a certain moment. Like there was no pause when he's five feet away. Um, it, he's, he's walking at a constant rate. So that like never came up, which is kind of cool. It simplifies the problem. Um, and then you would just divide by six. To be real honest, I mean, this does simplify, but I mean, to be real honest, you could do that if you wanted. Um, let's see, what would that be? 15 divided by three is five times 10 is 50 over six would reduce to 25 over three if you're being really fancy, if you wanted to simplify that down, but this is an acceptable answer, um, feet per second equals dz dt, I ran out of space. 